Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage. On a Monday morning, I was just thinking as I was putting on my shop shirt that I should at least have one shirt that actually has my correct name on it. It'll provide less confusion, perhaps. I'll put that on the list of things to do. Today I'm looking at my friend Charlie and Judy's Rossla 210. Uh, he's had this transmission, it's got to be 10, 12 years now. And it became the spare when he bought a second one. And at that time, we took it out of the stock transmission case and put it in this reed case. And it's been sitting, waiting, and then the reason it's here, I mentioned it in the other videos, I have this reoccurring dream when I swapped over to the Reed case that I didn't finish machining. You have to machine the intermediate clutch pressure, pressure plate for your clutch clearance. For some reason, I didn't think I had done the last step. I had done it a couple times and got interrupted, and it's been bugging me. I'm, I'll wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it, which I do all my transmissions. Um, fortunate, I try to be really thorough to prevent situations like here I am taking it back apart. But in this case, I, I had to do it before it needed to be pushed into service again. So all of this transmission on the internals still remains exactly how it left Rossler transmissions. Now on the totem pole of aftermarket race transmission builders, they're definitely among the top two or three. If you're a touring professional, you probably have a Rossler, an m, &M. I guess we'll call it the top two then. So I'm sure there's others. I mean, obviously ATI makes a good product and on and on. But if you pay attention to such things, which I do because I have interest in that area, the majority of the time you're looking at a Rossler or an m, &M. I've never had an M&M transmission apart. It's one of the few I haven't, but you never know. Could be tomorrow. So I did indeed take it back down to the immediate, intermediate clutches and they have ow, proper clearance. So before I stuck it back together, it seemed like a golden opportunity to talk about uh, at a certain point, the must-haves. Now, it's a Rossler 210. And some of the things I reference are going to be, I mean, I read all the online forums that I'm at least attached to. And a reoccurring question is how much power can the stock lower unit, the gear set, take in a Turbo 400? And as always, it depends on horsepower, traction, and weight of the vehicle. But more often than not, probably, uh, I don't even want to throw a percentage at it. The stock 2.48 to 1 first gear ratio is going to cause trouble for you traction-wise at a certain power level long before the gear set's going to give up. Hence why this has a 2.10 first gear, 2.10, and a 1.40 second gear instead of a 148. You're effectively numbing down your starting line ratio in this car that this transmission's in. It's only running on a 275, excuse me, a 10.5W, not a radial, it's a 10.5W. Still a pretty big tire, but still considered a small tire. And that's the kind of racing uh, they do. And all this no prep stuff came along well after this transmission was built. Well, at least the popularity of it. Same deal if you have big power, small tire, limited traction, you got to start cutting back your overall starting line ratio. That's your first gear ratio multiplied by your rear end ratio. And in this case, it's very popular to go 210 was the deal. You know, probably back when this transmission was built now with horsepower levels going way up when you got your blown Hemis and stuff that they're, you know, 150, 60, 70, 80 range first gear or just running it as a two speed. So. The parts this transmission is built out of, so it does have the aftermarket 210 gear set. Which, what I love about the Turbo 400 is right next to the beautiful, expensive billet parts, 
is a completely stock part, which does not have any horsepower limitations. Uh, the center support even appears to be stock, slightly modified. Uh, th but the drums are billet aluminum, and they're beautiful. They have bearings on either side. It's not, it does not have a roller baron on the center support. There's mixed, you know, mixed reviews about that. Some do, some don't do it. But it's TIG welded on, but I'm sure it has a 36 element sprag, aluminum drum. It does have the steel liner where the seals ride here. It does not have a steel liner where the forward seals ride. Let's just double check that. I don't want to lie to you. Yes, it does. I'm sorry. It has a steel liner in both cases. The Baron made it look like it was all the same color. But So where the any wear can occur, even though you're running the Teflon seals, over time, uh, with, when they originally went to aluminum drums, there was no sleeve where the seal would ride, and it would cause sealing issues uh, to the point where you're burning up clutches, because that is all that's delivering your oil to the important places. Now, once again, online conversations are, how many clutches do you need? Well, this is an excellent example. I like to build mine when I'm using just the 480 e-drums and the stock, or maybe an improved input shaft, but still a steel drum. Because this, this is, you're looking at at least a couple thousand dollars right here, probably more, just for these two drums. So it's, you know, definitely at a certain level. I mean, it's an awesome safety feature. We'll get to that. But talking number of clutches right now, I like to run six in the forward, six in the direct, four in the intermediate. So here's a peek inside a professional built transmission built for high horsepower. It has a four clutch intermediate. A six clutch direct and a nine clutch forward that one shocked me it has like 50,000 steels and clutches which are a lot thinner than the stock ones and there's nine clutches in there that's pretty impressive and they're just like new they're all it has red clutches in here probably what they could get their hands on both the intermediate and the direct not just a stock Borgwana clutch because it's not the clutch material itself that makes a hero out of your transmission. It is a proper pressure and the whole hydraulic apply system. So you nail that down, the clutch itself becomes, you know, just a, the meat and the sandwich. And the last highlight of the parts in front of me anyway, is you have the straight shaft, solid and no front state of bushing, which is common. So again, you don't have any restriction in your converter oil return. It would be tempting, but I always avoid it. This transmission was assembled in 2019. It's just set on the shelf. It's never been run. <clears throat> so the gasket, the O-ring, <clears throat> excuse me, and the pump bolt washes are all brand new. You could stick it right back together. Nine times out of 10, it would probably be okay, but on something like this or anything, is it worth the effort? I go ahead and just put new uh, seals and O-rings on it. it would, again, it's the right thing to do and you're probably gonna have long-term much better success. Trust me, I like in a different application, if we were, you know, junk yachting or fixing on the side of the road, that's, those are different decisions. But here we are with an expensive transmission you're not going to cut corners on, you know, twenty, thirty dollars worth of seals. Talking about front pump seals, typically this had last time I had it apart. It's a Transstar, just a stock, fifteen thousandths thick gasket. If you have set your end play and you're not trying to band-aid it at all. The stock 15,000s gasket is perfect. If you need to gain clearance, I buy the 10 packs of the ATI front pump gaskets. They're on their website. And they give you six of the 15,000 stock gasket 
They give you two 30,000 thick front pump gaskets. They give you two 45,000 thick, so. That is a crutch, but it's one of the few sites I've ever even seen it available on is the fact that they will sell you different thickness gaskets to try to gain yourself a little clearance if you're stuck. So it's an option available out there should you need it. So now I'm gonna stick it all back together. I use a forward pressure plate just as a handle. Or I could dump the clutches out of it, but lately I've just been using it. I've had this sitting on my bench like a tool. I put the snap ring three quarters away in, set it in there, swap it out with the real pressure plate, and jiggle everything else into place. So that's just what we're gonna do. This is the beauty of the Turbo 400. I knew I wasn't gonna go any deeper. I wasn't taking the gear set out, so I don't have to disturb anything in the pan. Only because I was just there a few years ago and nothing's happened to it. But if this was had previously been run, I would not do just this. So this is not the norm. I've actually can't remember if I've ever, ever done just pull the pump and the drums out without doing anything else. So that is it today. I'm gonna to stick this back together and next we're gonna put the ATI trans brake into the ATI Copo Turbo 400. So I'll catch you in a day or so.